What's going on guys? It's Nick here. Back with another video. We are on absolute heater right now. We've hit on the 20 to 1 in back-to-back -back weeks. We went 18 and 7 in week 2, 19 and 7 last week. This is a good time to remind everyone that you should not increase the amount that you are placing each week. You can up that next season if you want to, but the easiest way to lose what you've just won is to overextend yourself. We're not going to hit on the 20 to 1 every single week, so don't start thinking we are invincible. With that being said, we've got a great slate of games this week, and I'm excited to break down a few spots that I like. First up, we have Javonta Williams higher than 52 and a half rushing yards. Chicago has faced the second highest rush play rate in the NFL and now grayed out as the second best matchup for opposing running backs right behind the Broncos. Funny enough, um, we're actually going to see a spot like that for tight ends where the best matchup and the second best matchup are playing each other for position. Anyways, Broncos three and a half point road favorites and despite coming off a massive knee injury from last season, Javonta Williams has handled 55% of the team's carries thus far, handling at worst 11 carries in a game. Now, what gets me excited about this one is the expected game script. The Bears have lost a million straight games dating back to the last season, and my model has this projected as like a four to five point victory for the Broncos. So game script should finally be on Williams' side, and that's really all he's needed. The volume is there. The share of the offense is there. The production hasn't been amazing, but if he could just get a good game script, he'd have a really good game. Problem is, through three weeks, they haven't really found themselves in a positive game script, especially in the second half. They are now 0-3. When they finally do, they are going to run it. This is a team that is perfectly willing to go run heavy when they get a lead and given the matchup given what vegas is thinking what my model is thinking it should happen this week where the broncos are finally up in the second half so again higher than 52 and a half rushing yards for javonta williams they are not really using p ryan that much as a number two on the ground he's being utilized in the receiving game but that's not what makes this matchup really good what makes it really good is if they can build a lead they're going to be run heavy those runs are going to come from Javante Williams. My second favorite pick is Ramondre Stevenson, higher than 17 and a half receiving yards. Stevenson has fallen below this mark in back-to-back -back weeks, but this setup is a really good spot for him. Last week, obviously game script pushed in the other direction, right? They're playing the Jets. Uh, they're probably were going to win that game, at least in their thinking. They got up early. They were able to run the ball 40 times, only throw it 29 times, really drain the clock. That doesn't set up like a game where Stevenson is racking up receptions, right? The opposite is, I wouldn't say the opposite because they're not, you know, completely out of this game, but the game script should be completely different this week. They're on the road playing the Cowboys. They're six and a half point road underdogs. We're thinking they're not going to be able to just go in there gain like a one or two possession lead and just sit on running the ball because they know the other side can't really score. They know Dallas can score, so they're not going to be able to play in that same way. Um, would not be shocking to see Dallas be the one to come out to a lead and see the Patriots lean pass heavy. That's obviously a good thing for Mondre Stevenson. And since we know the strength of the Cowboys defense is their pass rush, the Patriots are going to start off by trying to run the ball, try and slow down that pass rush by running into it. And if they can find success, they'll lean on that. But the odds are, number one, they won't be overly successful in doing that. Maybe a little bit of success, but not overly successful. And number two, the odds are at some point they'll fall behind. And the next best way to attack that is with the screen game. So I'm expecting a few screen passes to Stevenson. He is great in the screen game. He can generate all of these yards on one screen pass. But if he's going to rack up, you know, two or three screen passes, get a few more design targets, uh, dump off targets, I'm thinking he can get over the 17 and a half mark. Also, if we look dating back to last season, he's gone higher than this underdog projection in only two of their nine wins but he's gone higher in seven of their 11 losses. When they get into these trailing scripts, he racks up receptions and yards. Again, I think the Patriots lose this week, and so I'm going higher than 17 and a half receiving yards. My third favorite this week is Jordan Addison, higher than 39 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. I believe I've listed Addison all three weeks. Maybe I haven't mentioned him in the video, but on the site, I've listed him there all three weeks. He has hit in all three weeks. If it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Um, now, to be fair, Addison has gotten a little bit lucky so far, especially if you look at his expected fantasy points per game. I know this is just rushing and receiving prop, but like 
if you look at expected fantasy points per game, he's below what he's actually produced because he's hit on two long touchdowns. That's going to help him go higher on his yardage projections, right? But that's just something that happens with really good players. You don't see Marquez Valdez Scantling, Chase Claypool going out there every week and just getting lucky, right? Maybe on occasion, but when players consistently get lucky, they're just good, right? And Jordan Addison is good. And if we look, his snaps are on the rise. He's playing the highest volume passing offense in the NFL. He's got the fifth best matchup for wide receivers. Like he's just a great player in a great situation in a great matchup. So I'm going to keep taking the higher until either he disappoints or like one of those aren't true. He's going to be a great player. He's going to be a great situation until we get into a spot where the matchup actually concerns us. And until underdog makes his projection higher, we're going to keep taking the higher. Fourth favorite pick uh, was Jordan Love on Thursday night, higher than 230 and a half passing yards. He bailed us out late. That was not looking like it was going to hit early on, but we kind of get bailed out in that final possession. So my fifth, sixth, seventh, and 10th favorite picks this week are all the tight end position. It was kind of surprising because I kind of just go through, put them all down, and then I kind of sort them after from favorite to least favorite. And I looked at it and I was like, why are all these tight ends towards the top? But I like... Travis Kelsey, higher than 71 and a half receiving yards. Darren Waller, higher than 45 and a half receiving yards. Evan Ingram, higher than 46 and a half receiving yards. And then Kyle Pitts, higher than 33 and a half receiving yards. Not only are all four really, really good players, their situations are obviously very different. One's on Kansas City, one's on the Falcons, right? But that's kind of factored in their lines. But all four very talented players. We like, you know, betting on very talented players, and all four are in really good spots this week. Um, Kelsey's going to be on the road against the Jets. Uh, the Jets are the third best matchup for tight ends, not because they're horrible at defending tight ends, but because they're so good at defending wide receivers. If you think about the Kansas City offense, well, that's what they kind of do anyways, right? They kind of don't target their receivers at an exceptionally high rate, and they funnel their targets to Kelsey. And so playing a defense that's going to naturally do that anyways Maybe a good spot for Travis Kelsey. We also know that, like, you know, even though the Jets are a good defense, Kansas City is going to score points. They're going to move the ball. They're just very likely this week to try and do that through Kelsey. Um, Waller is actually the only one on this list who gets a neutral matchup, but I'm doubling down on his role on this offense. He has a 20% target share on the season, which if you just take that with the expected production of the Giants offense, he should hit higher in this projection. But it's 20% despite, remember, week one was a downpour. He was limited with the hamstring and it was a blowout. So, like, he got no run if that game wasn't a downpour. He wasn't injured and he just, like, played the whole game, didn't sit the whole second half. He probably would have gone higher in that week. Then he goes higher in week two. And then he plays at the 49ers last week. So, it's been a, it's kind of tough to start the season for Waller. You don't want to make too many excuses because, like, he's done this before, right? He's been injured. He's underperformed before. But I believe pretty strongly that... Uh, an explosion week is coming soon for Darren Waller. It's a good spot for him to do so. 45 and a half yards feels more than fair for a tight end with a 20% target share. And on average, will probably be higher in that 20%. Then the last two, Evan Ingram, Kyle Pitts in the second best matchup for Evan Ingram against the Falcons. The number one matchup for opposing tight ends against the Jaguars for Kyle Pitts. That is the London game. So I guess one thing there, weird things can happen in the London games, but uh, it's a really, really good spot for both these players. Both these players are really important parts of their offense. And if you want to think about game script, uh, Kyle Pitts is going to hit in the games when they're trailing, right? When Atlanta gets up, they run the ball every single play. This is a spot where we're expecting the Jaguars to win. And so if they can get up, if Evan can have a good game, that's going to correlate really well with Pitts. It's going to force them to go more pass heavy. Pitts in a great spot, pretty low line. I mean, 33 and a half yards. I think that's a nice little stack there if you want something for the 930 Eastern London game. For general fantasy, for underdog, remember, it's a 930 Eastern kickoff in that game. So that is enough for the individual picks. What is the 20 to one this week? Uh, for week four, we're going to be stacking up the Rams at Colts game through three weeks. These teams rank fifth and sixth in plays per game. The Colts rank first in situation neutral pace, first in no huddle percentage. And as per established the run, the Colts rank first 
in overtime adjusted snaps per game, like Colts games in general. So when you add the Colts snaps plus the opposing team's snaps. The Rams don't play as fast. This is not a spot where both teams are running up and down the field a ton. We're going to get 90 plays combined, or 90 plays combined would be terrible. 90 plays on each side, right? But we know that they are willing to go very pass heavy. They rank sixth on average in pass play percentage. But we also know that if the Rams fall behind, they are very willing to have drives where they go nine plays, nine passes they will lean pass heavy and again we know elevated plays when teams go pass heavy uh, we've been able to hit the last two weeks on these 20 to ones because we've identified games that number one could see elevated plays but that number two we also knew those teams could skew pass heavy and number three they were consolidated offenses so you get more plays you know where those plays are coming and you know who those plays are going to for those teams because they're not distributing the ball amongst 12 different pass catchers it's only a handful of players this week we have a colts team that is going to elevate the plays of this game and a ram side that won't try and drain the clock if they get out to a lead because they know their ground game is terrible they're not going to sit there run the ball every play also the colts are great at stopping the run and terrible against the pass so it just sets up really well for them to throw the ball but then also if we get the reverse and the Rams fall behind, we still have a fast Colts team, but now a Rams team that's throwing the ball a ton. Again, a ton of plays would happen there. Then also, you look at the Rams side. I mean, they basically only throw to five players. Like, they don't throw to very many people. And so whenever they see elevated volume, you know exactly who it's going to. So the 20 to 1 this week is going to be Stafford higher than 257 and a half passing yards. That's kind of the most important one. If he's hitting this higher, he's going over that mark, we know who else is going over. So Puka Nakua, higher than 74 and a half receiving yards. And then Tutu Atwell, higher than 50 and a half receiving yards as well. You combine that with Michael Pittman Jr., higher than 61 and a half receiving yards. He's been great this season, phenomenal target share. It is important that the Colts side, you know, does get out to that lead. So you want them finding success. And then Josh Downs higher than three and a half receptions. I looked at his yardage one, but the receptions one was better. His target share is there. The target is just coming so close to the line of scrimmage. I'm just a little afraid with his that he could have, you know, five, six receptions, but he just gets, you know, lower on the yardage. And so we're going to go higher on three and a half receptions for him. Because again, the targets are going to be there. And since they're low dot. The catch percentage is also going to be there as well. All of these players I just mentioned, they have consistent and bankable roles on the offense. We know everyone we just talked about is going to be heavily involved. So if the plays aren't there, it could all dud, right? You could see everyone go under if we have, you know, like I said before, 90 combined plays. I don't think that's really in the cards here. But if we see a game where ideally the Colts jump out to a lead and we have the Rams coming back. But either way, if it's close throughout where one side kind of jumps out, we can easily say, see elevated pass attempts, elevated plays. That's what we want when we're hitting on a 20 to one. So those are my favorite picks this week, but I have a much larger list on my website if you want to see more. And if you want to see all those picks for free for the rest of the season, all you have to do is sign up for your first underdog account today using promo code FFA. Do that and make a minimum $10 deposit. And not only will underdog match your first deposit up to $500, but the following morning, I will email you login information to my website. You'll have access to all my underdog content and my premium fantasy stats app free for the rest of the season. So that'll do it for this one. Hope you all did enjoy. If you did, have a hang the like button and have subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.